Halo 2 has been one of the most highly anticipated games probably ever because the original game was so outstanding. 35, 40 people here and they're all about Halo and they all post on these online forums and they're all like these, these internet beings that like we finally get to shake hands with. Few video game series have reached the massive heights that the Halo games have. It's a series that exploded out of the gaming community onto Monday Night Football ads, Mountain Dew cans, college dorms, high school cafeteria. I, I feel like I'm kind of going backwards here, but Halo was everywhere. It was unavoidable. My name is Jakey, and if you'll join me, I'd like to dive deep into how Halo became the gaming monument it is today. Also, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Shit, uh, I'm 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 allowed to say that, right? Uh, I'm just I'm just messing around. I I run the show. Back in the '90s, before Master Chief was getting Kilimanjaro's, Halo developer Bungie was a well-established studio on the Apple Macintosh. That's that's called irony. Started by hot boys Jason Jones and Alex Seropian, Bungie had released successful games like Marathon, a futuristic FPS that actually introduced using only the mouse to freely look up and down in Myth, The Fallen Lords, a, a strategy game that I do not have a fun fact for. When Bungie began development on Halo for Mac and Windows, it actually started out as another top-down RTS type game where the player had these big open worlds that they could explore. During development, the studio realized that a third-person perspective would better fit the explorative nature of the game, and in 1999, Steve Jobs introduced the public debut trailer of Halo at the Macworld Expo. Now, it was around this time that Microsoft was on the hunt for games to launch on their sacred box and Bill Greats could smell money on them Halo rings. So they bought Bungie Software, turned them into Bungie Studios, moved them out from Chicago out to Washington and said, uh, uh look, look, Bungie boys, um, gonna go ahead and need you to put the game on the box, please. Okay, thank you. At some point, Bungie decided that a first-person perspective better fit the design of Halo, and what's cool is that the move to Washington actually influenced the iconic landscapes of the first Halo. The steep cliffs, mountains, large bodies of water, dead space marines, you know, it, uh, it all really came together. When Halo launched, Microsoft's advertising squad added the subtitle, Crombat Evolved, and while a part of me doesn't like it, Halo 1 couldn't have had a more fitting title. Halo changed the way people played shooters, in more ways than one, but first, I want to talk about what I mean literally. Also, the holiday spirit is really, really, it's really hot. Ugh. 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 Well, it was getting hot in there. Halo offered a twin stick control method where the left stick only controls the movement and the right stick only controls the view. This choice was meant to replicate the setup and precision of a mouse and keyboard and contrary to popular belief, Halo wasn't the first game to use this control scheme, it was just the first to do it exceptionally well. I mean, Goldeneye offered a twin stick setup if you use two N64 controllers, but uh, as if as if three handles wasn't enough. Can I go ahead and have six of them, please? There's quite a bit of factors that go into what makes Halo controls feel so good, but a big part is the aim assist. Separated into four scrategories, Halo's free look design came with some minor tools to kind of help the player aim where they want to aim. These are acceleration. Basically, aiming speed starts slow and then starts to speed up the longer you hold a direction. This makes it so that you can react accurately without 360 no scoping everything. Snapping. Think of this as a sort of soft lock. While the game doesn't completely take over control of your aiming, if you're in movement and an enemy is in view, the game will slower your look speed and sort of drag your view along with an enemy. Friction. Your aiming speed decreases when the reticle passes over an enemy to help you be more precise with your shots. This happens whether you're moving or standing still, but does not work with certain weapons such as the sniper rifle. 
bullet magnetism. This just means that if your reticle is on a target enough to make it red, the game will be generous with the hitboxes and sort of bend the bullets to hit the target. Not, not like that though. So the baby geniuses at Microsoft and Brungie made aiming work on a console and it felt slash feels really really good. But what about jumping, weapons, grenades, melee, crouching? What about all that stuff? Enter the control scheme slash shooter design that nearly every single console shooter still uses like seriously it's barely changed since 2001 and Halo 1 still does it better than most, whoa dude that's wacky ass. Not only did the lack of immediately accessible buttons on a controller impact the control scheme of Halo, but it was the structure of the game itself. During the development of Halo's combat and AI, it was actually the sense of exploration and open environments from the earlier versions of the game that led to Halo's freeform combat approach. Wide open areas instead of hallway shooting galleries meant making AI enemies that weren't scripted but instead could make their own decisions and deal with a variety of combat situations. This made every encounter feel fresh and organic. And to quote a Bungie dev, Jamie Greismer said, I think the main goal with the Chief as a character was that he sort of always has the ability to use the tools that he has at his disposal well enough to accomplish his objectives. So you don't always get to choose what weapon you're going to have, you don't always get to choose what vehicle you're going to get, but the Chief is just so incredibly competent at everything that you're going to be able to use whatever tool you can scrounge up that you're going to be able to overcome whatever fight you're in. The reason I'm going on this design tangent in relation to the controls is because they fit each each other perfectly. Unlike PC shooters where you have this giant arsenal of guns to cycle through on your keyboard, in Halo you can only carry two weapons at once, but you can pick up any weapon that an enemy drops, except the sword, but because that's coming later. Not only did this make it easier on the control scheme because it was just, you know, go, go ahead and hit that Y button if you want to change your gun, but it added a sense of strategy and customization. You may find an ammo stash to refill your magnum and assault rifle that you already have, but there might also be a sniper rifle there, but the sniper only comes with like 10 rounds, so you'd have to make all your shots count. It's these choices that create a different experience for every person that plays, and Halo's great selection of weapons made for a lot of fun and strategic combos to use. It, it uh, may, maybe also help that you're playing as a goddamn super soldier. Master Chief, he can melee attack with any weapon at the press of a button. That's the B button. He can throw grenades farther and Brett Favre throws pigskins on Monday night at the touch of a button. L trigger. He can jump ridiculously high. A button. He can easily zoom in while aiming with certain guns. Uh, I don't know, go ahead and click that right stick in. He can strategically teabag his enemies whenever he wants. Click the left stick. And he can stop the action whenever he damn well pleases. Uh, that's, that's just the, that's the start button, but, um, strategy. Along with the two weapon setup, another Halo design choice that stuck around since 2001 is the regenerating shield. While this may not suit all modern shooters, it complemented Halo's combat situations beautifully. It encouraged a more offensive approach to combat because it gave you some wiggle room to work with before your health began to drop. It became a game about testing your limits and skills under pressure while also acknowledging your environment from when you needed to back off and recollect yourself. It was a big combination of the game's control scheme and its design that made Halo so easily accessible yet so incredibly deep. It also helped that the sound effects were fat and explosive, the animations made guns like the assault rifle feel like they're gonna destroy your hands and the non-intrusive HUD was simple but gave you all the information you needed. It's a game that welcomed casual players with open arms but had the depth to entertain the hardcore enthusiast. And this is why the multiplayer exploded. Multiplayer split screen had existed on console for a while at this point with games like Perfect Dark or personal favorite, Conker's Bad Fur Day. While they had a skill ceiling for things to get competitive, they never quite reached the heights of their PC counterparts. Halo bridged that gap with Combat Evolved's deep gameplay and its system link features. Four Xboxes, four TVs, four Halos, and 16 Gamer Girls, 16 player matches of Slayer, King of the Hill, Capture the Flag, and whatever other modes you and your buddies came up with became possible on console. This is where Halo's mass of growth truly began. I mean, this game 
This game was like crack. It was so accessible and addictive. 16 people trying to play Halo were a dime a dozen. Kids held LAN parties, adults held tournaments. To say that you were the best at Halo were some fierce fighting words. Because Xbox Live wasn't launched until 2002, the only way to get your Halo fix was with real people. Master Chiefs would drive across the country to play Halo, and an inconvenience of no online play actually helped build a massive community of fans and lovers of Halo that would connect over a game about shooting each other in the face. Being able to shit talk with the people across the hall, reflecting on awesome moments of teamwork with new friends post game, the LAN parties were a beautiful thing. Speaking of beautiful things, um, you didn't think I wouldn't talk about the music, did you? Composed by Marty O'Donnell, Halo's soundtrack captured something special, something otherworldly for a video game. Wanting to make something ancient sounding, Marty, uh, just, just, just play the clip. There was no musical ideas at that point, and all of a sudden in 1999, um, two days before, or just a, just a few days before Macworld 99 when Steve Jobs came back, uh, we had an opportunity to show um, Halo for the first time to an audience. And so it was, a, it was a, during his keynote address and we had this great opportunity. So one of the guys here, Joe Staten, who's our writer, came to me and said, we need to, we need to be able to show Halo off to the world. And I said, well, we need really great music for that. So give me a shot at, at writing something. And, and uh, so I knew just the general idea of what it was gonna be. And we decided it needed to sound epic, mysterious, and ancient. And um, um, I was driving over to the studio and thought, well, ancient, uh, monks sound ancient, and I started singing some monk chants in my head and came up with that melody and came in and recorded it and boom. It was a combination of so many things, the world, the gameplay, the vehicles, the music, and the amazing multiplayer that made Halo's presence impossible to ignore. In the years following its release, the fanbase grew. A PC port with a dedicated community and modders proved that it was ripe for online play. Fan creations like Red vs Blue exploded in popularity. The stage was set for a sequel, one that somehow had to be better than the original, one that was ready for Xbox Live. When I started writing this video, my plan was to talk about all three of the original Halo games, but as you just watched, there was so much to say on just the first one alone. I'd like to make a follow-up video, uh, shit, maybe, maybe two more of them, about the other two giants in this original trilogy, but what do you guys think? What's your favorite Halo? Do you like the flood levels? Slide into my DM on Twitter and I'll 1v1 magnums only you on a hang em high. Before we part ways on this holiday though, I gotta ask you one thing. Does Halo CE stand for Halo Crombat Evolved or Halo Changed Everything? Till next time, I'll see you guys next week or something. Dark bless.